Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shushobhan Pramanik and today I will discuss a very important and interesting concept in pharmacology that is volume of distribution. But before that, let's consider an example. Let's say on a hot summer day, you are thinking about having an orange drink. So you ask three of your friends to make that for you and you provide each of them with an identical glass. You also provide them with the exact same quantity of orange powder concentrate so that they can add the desired quantity of water themselves and make a drink each. So your friends go to, into the kitchen to prepare the drink. After you take a sip from the drink prepared by the first friend, you find it too blunt. What might have been the problem here? Probably your friend has added too much water. When you take a sip from the drink prepared by the second friend, you find it too sweet and too sour. Must have been he have added too little water here. Finally, when you take a sip from the third glass, you find it just right. So this time your friend must have added the exact required amount of water to make it right. So the thing is that you didn't see any of your friends actually prepare the drink in front of your eyes. So how do you know how much water was added to make each drink? Obviously, you imagine them from the taste. So if a drug is just like the orange powder in the previous example, and our body is like the glass, and water resembles the total amount of fluid in our body, the question is, can we guess in how much of our body fluid the drug administered gets dissolved? Obviously, we cannot taste our blood or plasma to find it out because that will make us, um, okay, never mind. However, what we can do is we can take a plasma sample and analyze the plasma concentration of the drug in the laboratory from which we can get a rough idea about the amount of body fluid in which the drug gets distributed. Moving on to the volume of distribution. So what is it? Volume of distribution is denoted by the abbreviation VD. It is also known as apparent volume of distribution, in which case the abbreviation AVD is used. So it is the total amount of body fluid which accommodates all of the given dose of a drug. And when the drug is given, it gets immediately and uniformly distributed in this imaginary volume. So the important part to remember here is that, that the drug gets uniformly distributed. That means if we take a plasma sample from any part of the body, everywhere the concentration of the drug in the plasma will be just the same. Coming on to the question why volume of distribution is an imaginary volume, the important thing to consider here is that volume of distribution when calculated can be more than the total amount of fluid in our body. How is that possible? We will just see very soon. Another thing to consider is that we are imagining our body to be a single compartment. That means we are imagining our body to be just like a balloon filled with fluid, which it is not. Our body is basically multi-compartment, that means there are different types of tissues and partitions in our body like liver, intestine, heart, kidney, bones, etc. And when a drug is given, it may attain different concentrations in the different parts of the body. So how is volume of distribution calculated? What is done is healthy human volunteers are chosen and they are given a fixed dose of the drug in question intravenously. Some time is allowed to elapse for the drug to get distributed and attain equilibrium in the body. Then the plasma concentration of the drug is measured at fixed time intervals. Now we plot the plasma concentration around the y-axis and the time along the x-axis and because we started to measure plasma concentration of the drug a few hours after the injection of the drug. So that gives us a plasma concentration time plot of the drug like this. Note that due to continuous elimination, the plasma concentration of the drug decreases with time. 
Considering volume of distribution is the volume of fluid in the body that accommodates the whole amount of the drug, we need to find out the plasma concentration of the drug at the time zero, where there was no loss in drug quantity due to elimination. So to do that, we will have to extrapolate the plot to meet the y-axis and at that point, we will get the concentration of the drug at time zero, which we can say C0. Obviously, it is expressed in units like milligram per liter, while the total dose will be expressed in milligrams. With that, the calculation of volume of distribution is pretty basic arithmetic. If we divide the total dose D by C0, that is the plasma concentration at the time 0, we will get the volume of distribution. So another thing to consider here is that if we give a large dose of a drug, which is the numerator in this equation, but interestingly find the plasma concentration that is the denominator to be very low we are going to get a very large volume of distribution. Now the total dose was in milligrams and the plasma concentration was in milligrams per liter. So the volume of distribution will be expressed in liters. Also consider if the total dose was given in terms of milligram per kg body weight then the volume of distribution will be expressed as liter per kg body weight. So that brings us to the most important question. What are we going to do by imagining this volume of distribution and what are its practical uses? So consider this, when a drug is first tested in human subjects, there are a lot of things that we do not know about the drug. And by looking at the volume of distribution, we can get some pretty interesting informations. Like we can make a rough guess about the sites in the body where the drug makes a visit to and in which organs it gets accumulated. For example, if the volume of distribution is somewhere around 5 to 10 liters, and remember the total volume of blood in a normal adult human is around 5 liters, so we can assume the drug to be mainly distributed in the intravascular compartment. For example, warfarin is one such drug. If the volume of distribution is somewhere around uh, 10 to 20 liters, then the drug is primarily present in extracellular fluid like gentamicin. Also, if the volume is somewhere around 30 to 40 liters, then probably the drug is distributed both in extra and intracellular fluid, for example, phenobarbital. And lastly, if the volume of distribution is very high, that is above 70 liters, then probably the drug is getting sequestrated in some tissue or organs. For example, chloroquine gets accumulated in liver, which accounts for its high volume of distribution. Now the other things to be noted is that if a drug is highly polar or ionized, it will not be very effective in crossing the cell membrane of various tissues, so it will have low volume of distribution. Similarly, our cells have a primarily lipophilic membrane, so a very water-soluble drug will have a hard time to cross through it, and again the volume of distribution in that case becomes low. If a drug is extensively bound with plasma proteins, then obviously the size of the drug in combination with the protein becomes much larger, so it cannot pass through the small pores of the biological membranes. So again in that case, the volume of distribution becomes low. On the contrary, a nonpolar drug or a highly lipid soluble drug or a drug that does not bind with plasma proteins that much can easily cross through lipid membranes and get distributed into several tissues of the body leading to considerably lower plasma concentration, hence a very high volume of distribution. Volume of distribution is also required to calculate some very important pharmacokinetic parameters. For example, loading dose is calculated by multiplying steady state plasma concentration to the volume of distribution. Another very important parameter is the plasma half-life of a drug, which is 0.693 multiplied to the volume of distribution divided by the clearance of the drug. So now we know what is volume of distribution, how it is measured, and what are its clinical importances. So if you have found this discussion to be useful, please like, share, and subscribe to get more such videos coming soon. Thank you.